Hello and welcome to Chemix. Today we'll be purifying and drying some store-bought acetone. All you need for this is some acetone and some anhydrous calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate is usually sold in its anhydrous form as plaster of Paris and that's exactly how I bought it. But you never know how long it's been sitting on the shelf so I dried it in the oven at 250 degrees celsius for 40 minutes. Technical grade acetone like this is usually pretty pure, the main two impurities being condensation products and water, both of which we can get rid of through fractional distillation. I roughly measured out 250 milliliters of acetone and transferred them to this 500 milliliter round bottom flask. We will now set up for fractional distillation to purify our acetone. Any condensation products that might be present will be removed since they have a much higher boiling point than acetone. Also, acetone does not form an azeotrope with water, so we will also remove most of the water. I've set up for fractional distillation of the crude acetone and I'm not going to go into too much detail about the apparatus right now since I've already explained it a couple of times in my previous videos. So if you do want more information about how to set up for fractional distillation, I recommend you go check out my last videos. I've stopped the distillation and in the boiling flask we're left with a little residue. The still head temperature constantly remained at around 55 to 56 degrees celsius, so this indicates our acetone was pretty pure to begin with. The pure acetone we collected will now be dried over some anhydrous calcium sulfate. The procedure I'm following calls for 25 grams of calcium sulfate per liter of acetone. So since we have roughly 250 milliliters of acetone here, we need 6.25 grams of anhydrous calcium sulfate, but to compensate for any impurities or water that might be already present in the calcium sulfate I have, I measured out 7 grams. So without further ado, let's add the drying agent to our acetone. I'm now going to let the acetone and the calcium sulfate stir for a couple of hours, and then turn off the stirring and let the calcium sulfate settle to the bottom. Here we are the next morning. I let the acetone stir with the calcium sulfate for a couple of hours, then turn off the stirring and let it settle down overnight. I now transfer the acetone into a bigger flask so we can distill it, and I'll try not to get too much of the calcium sulfate in there, but it doesn't really matter since we are going to add fresh calcium sulfate anyways. Next, we distill our acetone over some fresh calcium sulfate, and the procedure calls for adding another 10 grams per liter of calcium sulfate, so, since we have 250 milliliters of acetone, uh, I weighed out another 2.5 grams of anhydrous calcium sulfate that I'm going to add to our acetone right now. Alright, in it goes. Take the makeshift funnel out. Actually, that's an embarrassment, but... <laughs> oh well. Then, add a stir bar and I'll set up for simple distillation. I've set up for simple distillation and I'm using my Liebig condenser which is totally enough to condense acetone. In the bottom left here you can see our digital thermometer showing the still head temperature. Since dry acetone is reasonably hygroscopic I attached a wash bottle containing just a little bit of sulfuric acid to the vacuum takeoff. This is to limit the exposure of our dry acetone to air and thus water. We're in the middle of the distillation and we're collecting our now pure and dry acetone. The still high temperature is reading a pretty much constant 55 to 56 degrees Celsius, 
So we have another verification that we do have pretty much pure acetone here. I'm going to keep this running until pretty much nothing more comes over since the main reason of this distillation is to separate the acetone from the drying agent and not to purify the acetone. So I'll see you when the distillation is done. Here's our final yield of dry acetone. I stopped the distillation a little early because the thermometer started flickering to 57 degrees and I think this might just be my cheap eBay thermometer but I didn't want to take any risk. The acetone is pretty cheap to begin with so I didn't care about losing any. Last but not least I transferred the acetone into a proper storage bottle. So here we go, that's our final yield of dry acetone and I guess this is probably like 200 milliliters. So we did lose a little during the distillation steps but it's uh, therefore our product is pretty pure. That about wraps up this video and as always I hope you liked it, leave me a comment in the comment section down below, give me a thumbs up if you want and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.